All right, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Structure Free Learning. And in this video, we're gonna do a long overdue example problem, frame analysis using our slope deflection equations for a frame that experiences some side sway, or it's an unbraced frame with lateral loading. And we're gonna use the slope deflection equations to solve for the reactions and draw the internal normal shear and moment diagrams. Now, when I do this problem, I'm assuming that you have some understanding of how to use the slope deflection equations to solve of statically indeterminate beams we're just going to apply it to a frame and i'm just going to show you how it's done it's not that much different the frame that i have in this problem is fixed at a has a moment connection at b another moment connection at c and then fixed at d and here i have you know, a length of 24 feet and a height of 18 feet and a uniformly distributed load on member AB that is six kip per foot. Now, the way I like to do my slope deflection equation problems is to first make sure I draw a free body diagram of my structure. Two, I wanna draw an exploded view of the structure. And within this step, I like to identify my beginnings and ends of each member. This is also the same as defining a local coordinate system for each member. Then what I'm going to do is write out my slope deflection equations for each member. And it's two slope deflection equations per member. And then I identify my equilibrium equations or write my equilibrium equations out. And then hopefully after we've done all that, we'll have matching number of equations and unknowns and we'll be able to solve the equations for the displacements. And then, wow, this is a long problem, man. When then we'll solve for the moments again. So after we substitute these displacements and rotations back into the slope deflection equations, finally draw axial shear and moment diagrams for each member. All right, so now that we have a sense of what we're gonna do, the first thing I wanna do is draw the free body diagram. And I'm gonna give myself a little credit for that right here. So bam, there's my FBD. And all I gotta do is draw in the reactions at the supports. And here, let's see at a i'm gonna give myself an a a y a x and a moment at a bam i got d y d x and a moment at d and there's my free body diagram and what i like to do next is really i think it's really important in terms of visualizing this whole problem so i like to draw an exploded view where i isolate each joint and each member so i need a lot of space for that and so first i'm just going to draw the member before i draw the joint so the member is going to be here is member a b boom this little line right here represents member a b and it's as if I I cut it away from the structure on member AB, I have a uniformly distributed load of six kit per foot. And here, the next thing I wanna do is establish the local coordinate system or the beginning and end or the near and far, whatever you wanna call it, I or J of the member. And I'm gonna choose my left to right, my beginning to end to go from the bottom upwards in this member AB. So I'm gonna say here, so here, this is my beginning and this is my end of member a b and my end moments i'm going to draw them using the convention for slope deflection equation which means that you have to draw them clockwise that's the dirt that's the way those equations are derived so you've got to do that so here is my end moment a b and here is my end moment b a and then using an irregular internal positive sign convention for cuts for my shear and my normal forces, I will have, I will assume this member is in tension and I draw my normal force away at this cut NBA and my shear, since I'm looking at the left side of a cut, I'm gonna say boom, this VBA and here my shear on the right side of cut VAB and my normal force N. A, B. And that is my exploded view of member A, B. And based on this, I can draw, I can start kind of filling in joint A here. And so if I were to look at specifically joint A, if I want to look at joint A, here's my cut away of member A, B. This is fixed. I have my reactions. And on the inside, of this, I'm gonna choose the equal and opposite of this right here is gonna be applied to the cut at the joint. And so I'll have, and now I would also have joint B over here. If I look at joint B, I'll draw this way over here. Boom, boom, cut away from joint B. That's member BC, cut away. And here on, the, on this side of joint B, 
I would have equal and opposite of the end moments and shears and axial force. And before I draw the end moments and shears here on the other side of joint B, I'm gonna go ahead and draw the exploded view for member BC. Here's member BC. I cut it away from the structure. I'm gonna choose my left to right or my beginning and end, my local coordinate system, whatever you wanna call it, okay? Don't let yourself be scared. Boom. Again, my end moments, I'm gonna use a the clockwise convention, sign convention here. So boom, for my slope deflection equations, this is M B C, and then here is M C B. And then again, my shears in the same format, boom, V C B, V B C, and my normal forces pointing away. That now with that being said, I can do the equal and opposite and apply that internal loading to joint B. And now I just repeat the process for the last member, member C D. And here it's again as if I cut away from the frame, boom, like this. I'm gonna choose my beginning and end. This time I'm gonna go top to bottom or left to right going this way, top to bottom, my beginning and end. My beginning will be joint C, my end will be D. And again, I draw my internal moments or my end moments using a clockwise sign convention. And my joints here would look joint C. And similarly for joint D. Woo! And that is my exploded view for the structure. Damn, that's a lot of work. But if you can do this, you know, you're, I, I feel like you're halfway there. Because after that, it's just really plugging and substituting into equations and just plugging and chugging and solving.